I have a great HOA and Karen video for you today. Here's our first story. Check out this video in podcast form by searching Austin Stories wherever you listen or check the video description for a link. This story has an update. Neighbor cussed me out for parking in the public street in front of my house. They have four cars that they always park in the street and two they keep in their driveway. I don't have a problem with them parking in front of my house. It's a public road and anyone can park there, obviously. This has been a low-level feud since they moved in. and only gets going when my grown kids come back from college and parking starts to get tight. Normally, we park three cars in our driveway and one in the street when they're home. In response to us parking one car in the street, they'll park their car in front of my house, first even before parking in their driveway or in front of their own house. When they would do this, I would return the favor and park in front of their house. Eh, Petty, perhaps, but I don't like the idea of inconveniencing another neighbor just because they feel entitled to park in a manner that wouldn't allow a second car to park in front of my house unless they, you know, blocked either theirs or my mailbox or let me put out yard waste, think like leaves and branches. Only one of my kids is home, so we have been parking three cars in the driveway, no problem. My wife asked to move the other car so she could take her car to go see her mother. So, I backed it out of the driveway, and I parked in a space that was available in front of my house. It just so happens that they pull up in the car that's been parked in that spot for the last two weeks right as I'm getting out of my car. They park their car behind one of their cars in the driveway, they get out and just yell that you're a butthole to me. Not sure I heard it correctly, I said, what's your problem? To which he repeats himself and says that I stole his space. I tell him, hey, look, I only moved the car because my wife wanted to get her car out. He doesn't believe me, and he says, yeah, sure thing, but... At that moment, I met his energy with a few choice words of my own. Think four letters, and it's perhaps the most versatile word in the English language. I then ask if I'm not allowed to park one car in front of my house while he still has another of his cars in front of my house. And then I asked, hey, how many cars do you all have out here? At that point, he just waved me off and started to go inside. I probably should have walked, but instead, I told him Merry Christmas and cussed him out one more time for good measure. Am I proud of this moment? Not really, but at the same time, I'm not sure how else I could have handled it. The update. Friday, we got about 5 inches of snow while my wife and I were at work. We both left fairly early in the morning right as the storm started. This means most of the driveway is covered. Couple that with the driveway being slightly inclined and the snow plows having already come through, pushing an almost two foot tall by four foot wide wall of snow in front of the driveway. And it's obvious that I'm not getting into the driveway without first having to do some cleanup. Of course, the neighbor has parked in front of my house after we left, hence why the plow didn't get closer on subsequent passes. I parked my truck in the street in front of their house, I opened the garage to get the snowblower out, and I go ask my other neighbor, who was out getting their driveway clear, if they wanted a hand. As I'm talking to the other neighbor, the mother comes out and asks, is this your truck? I politely respond, yes ma'am, to which she then tells me I have to move it from the street since it's reserved for her son who is coming later. I politely say, hey, I do not have to move it. That's not how street parking works, and I wouldn't have parked there if there was space in front of my own house, but you've already parked there. Of course, this doesn't go over well, and she starts calling me a butt, threatens to call the police, and tells me that I need to park in my driveway. After a few more curse words are exchanged, she says that we're going to have a parking war. I just laugh at this, since my kids are away, so it's only me and my wife at home for the next few months. She finally goes inside. I guess she's telling her adult son what had just happened, while the neighbor I was talking with is like, what the heck? I explain to him that this has been going on for a while, that they think they own the street. As I'm telling him the history with these neighbors, the son comes out in a full-on rage. He's hollering, you can't talk to my mother that way, and it's cussing me out. I tell him to go home, and this was not the response he was looking for. He starts coming towards me and the other neighbor as we're standing in his driveway. He's yelling, you don't tell us what to do. I don't think he realized what hypocrites they're being, but I digress. Once he gets to my property, I tell him twice to get off of my property and that he's trespassing. He doesn't stop coming till he hits my driveway, and my only assumption is, well, it dawns on him that there's two guys standing there who haven't moved an inch, and he isn't that big. What he wants to happen is not going to end well. 
So he stops coming toward us and then turns down my driveway and starts with this pathetic, I can't be trespassing, I'm on the sidewalk, it's public. He eventually starts walking back to his house, still cussing about me. He grabs a shovel and starts throwing snow in front of my truck tires front and rear. I'm guessing this was an attempt to get me stuck in front of their house? The one place they don't want me to be parked at. I chuckle to the neighbor I'm standing with and I say that it's not going to work unless they can bury the axles. That truck has four-wheel drive. I then pulled out my phone and called the police. The police arrive and say, first, I want to let you know you haven't done anything wrong. You are allowed to park anywhere in the street. Well, I appreciated that it was a thing to hear, even though I knew it already. I tell them that this is not the first time they've harassed me, but it is the first time someone came at me and onto my property. I explain that I have video of it, and you can clearly see in the snow where he came across my yard. He went over and talked with them for quite a bit before leaving. Once they left, I took my time clearing up the snow for my place and the other neighbors before moving my truck to my driveway. The best I can tell is they still would like to escalate, which their attempt seems really funny to me, since almost immediately after I moved my truck to my driveway, they pulled a car out of their driveway and parked there like I was going to come back. They have since been playing musical chairs with their vehicles so that they have all the spaces in the street that they want. What's even better is that they aren't even efficient about it. They'll go move a car when one goes out to save a spot and then they take the time to move it back when the other car comes back. Heck, they're even leaving their trash cans out there in an effort to save spaces. I think these people just want to fight. You ever know anybody that just wants to fight and argue about something? And it doesn't matter if they get their way or not, they just want to win a battle and argue. How would you handle this? HOA raising monthly fees by almost 20% due to a legal battle with two residents who own non-certified pit bulls. Can anything be done to fight this? So the HOA sent out an email recently stating that they would be increasing the monthly amount by 20% after a long and costly legal battle with two sets of residents who did not disclose they were keeping pit bulls. The two sets of residents claimed Emotional Support Animal, or ESA, status and had their lawyers fight it. The reasoning for the increase in cost is because the HOA stated that their liability insurance went from $2,500 to $10,000 a month, which is a 4x increase, and needed to comp that by raising the monthly rates of each tenant. No other insurance company would cover with the presence of pit bulls. They stated that this process had been going on for six months. They held our annual meeting last month, which was virtual because they got torn apart for the last in-person one, and nothing was mentioned of this ongoing issue. They purposely chose to release this information and the increase in cost after the annual meeting had been done to prevent the tenants from banding together. It's just incredibly frustrating that because of two sets of residents, the entire complex has to deal with such a high increase in HOA fees. Can anything be done? The HOA sucks in general. Upkeep for the property, snow removal, and so on are terrible compared to our surrounding complexes. Here's the letter that they sent out to all the tenants for more information. Please read through the entirety of this letter. It contains important information about your HOA insurance and immediate dues increase. Last September, the HOA learned that two different units here at HOA Place had unapproved pit bulls. Per our bylaws, all pets need to be approved in writing by the HOA board. This is for pet owner protection, as well as the protection of the residents of this community. It ensures responsible pet ownership, up-to-date pet vaccination records, and compliance with our HOA insurance, which will not cover our association if there are aggressive dog breeds living here. Our HOA insurer told us our policy would not be renewed April 1, 2023 if the two pit bulls remained on our site. Per our bylaws, no owner shall do anything that will cause our association to lose its HOA insurance. Because both owners refused to remove their dogs, we were forced to seek legal action on behalf of the association to avoid losing its insurance. Both owners sought protection under the Fair Housing Act by claiming their pit bulls were emotional support animals and demanded that the association find new insurance for our association that would include pit bull coverage. 
When the board informed one of the pit bull owners that the pit bulls were prohibited, she sought ESA asylum after the fact. The other owner is a renter. Even when informed that their dogs would cost the HOA their insurance, these two owners refused to permanently remove their dogs. In spite of this, the HOA board tried to accommodate their request, per the Fair Housing Act, that we secure a different insurer for our association. Both the board and our insurance carrier contacted dozens of insurers, most of whom refused to even consider insuring an association with pit bulls. The few quotes we received that would cover an HOA with pit bulls were financially unmanageable. The HOA board did not feel that asking this of our association was a fair accommodation, and we were forced to seek legal action against the two pit bull owners. For the last half of a year, we have been working with an attorney on behalf of the association. This has been a time-consuming, stressful six months for the board, and we could not discuss this with everyone without compromising our legal case. As of April 1, 2023, our HOA insurance was not renewed. This was 100% due to the continued presence of the pit bulls on the property. While one of the pit bull owners agreed to temporarily remove her dog, she claims that she did so on March 31, 2023. This was too little too late, and our insurer would not renew our policy when it was literally within hours of expiring. The insurance we had had a competitive premium, excellent coverage, and an almost impossible to find flat rate deductible of $2,500. This is no more. We were able to secure new coverage, but at an increased premium. Our deductibles will be four times higher at $10,000. Our premiums will increase approximately $8,500 a year. As a direct result, HOA dues will increase effective June 1st, 2023 by $20 a month to $170 a month. The $20 monthly increase is solely to pay for the increase in HOA insurance premiums and deductibles resulting from the presence of the pit bulls. Another fallout is that we will need to postpone some of the capital improvements that we had contracted for this spring, including replacing the wood retaining wall at the corner of street with stone due to the unexpected legal expenditures as described above. This person says to read the CCNRs and figure out what exactly they can do budget-wise. But I mean, honestly, if you have any questions like this, a lawyer should be able to comb through that letter and figure out what to do. Is it fair to punish all the residents because of the actions of two with the pit bulls? Let me know what you'd do. Purchased a home with no HOA, but the neighbors say there is one. I just purchased a home mostly because it was the only one we could find that absolutely had no HOA because we have multiple vehicles and my husband likes to work on them in the driveway and we have a car hauler that we needed to be able to park in the backyard and so on. This was 100% a requirement for us to buy a home that was no HOA. The Zillow listing, the contract, the purchase agreement, and the disclosure statement from sellers all say no HOA. Now the neighborhood did previously have one many years ago, but we were told it was abolished. This is the third home that we've tried to purchase in the same neighborhood, all under the impression there was no HOA. Well, my husband was talking to the neighbors and two different ones mentioned the HOA, and one even mowed our grass while we were moving in, and he said that he didn't want the HOA to leave a fine on our door. What are we supposed to do if we purchase a house with no HOA, but apparently there is one? Now we did have an attorney, it is a VA loan, so everything was gone through meticulously. We are friends with our realtor and she knew no HOA was non-negotiable for us purchasing a home and we both researched top to bottom on every house that we were interested in. We put an offer on two other homes on the same street but got outbid. Now both also stated in the listing description on Zillow specifically no HOA. We have two daily drivers and we have one vintage race car for car shows and a 67 Camaro that he's restoring. We also have a side-by-side -side and dirt bike since we live in the woods and like to go riding. The car hauler is a luxury travel trailer to bring the cars to shows that cost about 220 grand. Not that it should make any difference. I mean, all the vehicles are titled and registered and stored in the garage unless they're being worked on or driven since we live in the south and the garage has no AC. Now, the neighbors did not mention it out of spite. One was making a joke because our lawn was a mess when we moved in and the other one mentioned it in friendly conversation to my husband. No one has complained. You gotta look at the deed is what they're saying about this and make sure that you know what you're getting into for sure. And if it's breaking the rules, get a lawyer. I'm no lawyer, but that's what I think you should probably do. What do you think?
Well, I had a heck of a weekend that should have been nice and relaxing. To start, I went to visit my parents this weekend, who are both just yes. My parents live in a fairly expensive and safe public neighborhood that they retire to after a long career life. Nice school in the community, a few community pools, a few trails in the same area. Average homes here are around 1.5 million bucks. But because it's a public community, meaning it has no gate to enter, it picks up crime every few years. Lately, there have been break-ins near the top area of the community. When there is crime in a normally safe area, this can put some people on edge, reporting everything. My mom got reported for walking the family dog at 7 p.m. on the same loop that she does every day at the same time for the past five years. A bit on me. I'm six foot, big beard, bald head, moderately built, and tend to wear button-down shirts when I'm not working. Where my story begins is just outside my parents' place. Since it's a public community, all the streets are public as well. It isn't illegal to park here if you aren't a resident. It's just out of the way of anything but homes, so there isn't really a reason that anyone who isn't visiting or living here should park here. I have a brand new Chevy Colorado ZR2, a truck. I parked it literally outside my parents' house, invisible from their living room window, which is where we were sitting and talking. I'd say about 45 minutes later, a tow truck pulls up and starts hooking up to my truck. I ran out yelling obscenities. Tow truck says they had a call about an illegally parked vehicle. After explaining that it's a public area and is by no means illegal to park here, I asked for the contact info of the reporting individual. I didn't get much, just a first name, Karen, just for the sake of the story. So I asked my parents and they gave a fair sized frown like they already knew it had to be her. My parents had new neighbors that moved across the street a few months back. I'll save some of their stories for another time, I'd rather not get too sidetracked. So I walk over to the house, I see various toys and such all over their front side of the house. A bit messy, but I was a mess as a kid too. Knock knock. No answer. Ring the buzzer which is one of the ring cameras. I then hear a bit of yelling at her kids to stop running around. Now I know she's home, so I just kept ringing the door. As I'm waiting, I notice that she has multiple cameras on me. This is important later. So she finally answers the door. She asks me what do I want, in a B tone. In a calm voice because she seemed a bit annoyed already. Why did you call a tow truck on my vehicle, I said. Karen says, you shouldn't be parking there. I've never seen you before. It's illegal to park here if you're not a resident. We don't need convicts around here looking for homes to case. I say, convicts? What the heck? Why the heck would you think that? This is a public street. I can legally park here anytime I wish. I'm visiting my parents, and I have a right to park here without being towed. Leave my truck alone, or I... I'm not even going to elaborate. And then I walked away. Not 10 minutes later, I looked into the window to see two boys, maybe 10 years old, egging my truck. I ran outside, grabbed the hose, and sprayed the boys in my truck down. Thank God for a thick wax coat. Guess which house those two boys ran to? I decided to leave it be. I'm leaving in 30 minutes anyways. 15 minutes later, a police officer walks in front of our door. I open it and I talk with the officer. He says, hey, is that your truck? Yes, it is, officer. We received a report that the owner of that truck was driving recklessly in the neighborhood and almost ran over two children. After getting out of the vehicle, he yelled at the children and proceeded to hose them down with a strong water hose. Officer, that is a heck of a story. Would you be interested in coming into my parents' home and we'll pull up the cameras while I explain my side of the story? He accepted and we entered the house. While we viewed my parents' cameras and I explained the sequences leading up to the current events, I explained the full conversation that I had with Karen, including her insinuating that I was a convict and that I partially made a threat. I apologize that I should have caught myself sooner. I also mentioned the multiple cameras Karen has at her door. Thank you for your time, the officer says. I may be back in a bit after I have a talk with your neighbor. 20 minutes and a bit of yelling in the background later. I've talked with the neighbor about her and her children's actions. Would you be interested in pressing charges for the destruction of property? No, officer. They're just kids, likely doing what Karen told them to. Were you able to check her cameras? All right. No, she denied access. She shouldn't be bothering you again. But if she does, please don't hesitate to call the non-emergency line and ask for myself directly. I left not long after. 
So far, there hasn't been any retaliation against my parents. With all the cameras we have in this day and age, how are you just not thinking that you're going to get caught? You always hear at the times growing up like, oh, if we had all the cell phones that they have now when I was growing up, all the stupid stuff I would have been caught doing would have been on camera and uploaded to social media and stuff. Oh, this is a crazy story. What would have you done? The HOA doesn't like my project car, so I've decided to park it legally in front of the neighborhood's grand entrance. For context, my family and I recently moved into a rental house while our new house is being built. The rental is in the back of a gated community on a mostly undeveloped street. Yesterday, I received a letter from the homeowners association informing me that I'm not in compliance of the strictly enforced by towing restriction stating that vehicles may not be parked on the street overnight. In the letter was a picture of my project car, an old BMW, parked beside our house on the street. I decided to look up the HOA's restrictions, which I haven't seen before since I'm a renter, and I discovered that I'm living in HOA heck. The street parking rule is just the beginning of a long list of restrictions, including one warranting a hefty fine for leaving the garage door open when not in use. This came as a huge surprise, since several of my neighbors have parked their cars on the street without problems since I've lived here, so I assumed that it was okay. I can only imagine that they've singled me out because my car is 30 years old. However, in my defense, it's very presentable and by no means junky. Being singled out made me incredibly frustrated to the point where I started doing legal research. Turns out, my HOA has every right to tow my project car since it's parked on a private street in the neighborhood. The good news for me is that the street just outside the neighborhood is public and it's 100% legal to park it on any amount of time. Unfortunately for the HOA, the closest section of public street to my rental house is right in front of their nice gated entrance. Ironically, my old BMW has now become part of their image and there's nothing they can do about it until I move out in a few months. This one's beautiful because you're just sticking it straight to the HOA. They say don't do this, you say alright, cool, but you follow the rules so they can't do anything about it. Love it. Well, what have you done? Insane neighbor story. So background, I live in a condo complex with the long single story basement units and skinny two story units on top. It's not a horribly sketchy part of town, but it's certainly not pristine. I'm in the basement unit and I can hear everything that my upstairs neighbors are doing. That's fine, I mean it's part of living underneath someone, no problem at all there. So I've got two units above my place and the one closest to my front door has a family of pretty sketchy people living up there, always coming and going with random crap. Twice now I've watched them bring multiple TVs into their unit only to take them out and load them up into their car. They fight regularly and I've been woken up a couple times from that. When we moved in two years ago, the father, I assume, was pretty cold to me and never said hello. Didn't even respond to a what's up nod. Okay, I thought to myself, nah, that's fine, he just doesn't want to be friends. I'm alright with that, I don't need to be friends with everybody around here. But today he was a total anus hole. I was out in the parking area helping my girlfriend fix up her bumper, I forgot a tool inside, so I was on my way back into my unit. When passing my upstairs neighbor's little balcony, I hear this from above me. Hey jerk! I look up and he continues, quit slamming your freaking door, I'm getting real ticked off. Dude, what are you going on about? I don't slam my door, we just have to close it tightly every time. Well who the heck is slamming your door then? Dude, you just need to chill out. No one's slamming that door. We just have to push it closed because the weather stripping is thick. Well, frickin' fix it. It is fixed. The thick weather stripping is the fix. Quit slamming the frickin' door. You don't want to screw with me. You're screwing with the wrong guy. At this point, I'm getting pretty riled up. Of course, but you know, I'm only really just trying to stay calm in spite of him losing his frickin' mind. I'm not screwing with you, dude. I'm not slamming the frickin' door, dude. At this point, he turns to go in, mumbling some expletives, as one does. That exchange wasn't totally verbatim, but the start and finish certainly is. So for the record, I do not slam my door. I push or pull it closed and then give it a little push and tug so the latch catches. That's it. I'm a little spooked about what he might do next. I'm getting the ball rolling on my end, but he could call up his boys and mess my stuff up if I do anything. Wow, what a jerk. I just love to figure out what he considers slamming and come to a resolution. 
but I don't think he'd be responsive to a regular people, let's find a solution chat. I mean, I'd want to leave the guy alone in a way because you never know what'll make him just go off the end because he already sounds like a little door shutting gets him mad. How would you handle a neighbor like this? HOA filed a lien on our home, even though we've been paying them monthly since we bought the place. My wife and I are facing a bit of a strange quandary, and we would love any feedback you may have regarding an issue with our HOA. We're located in northern Utah. To put it simply, we received a notice of our HOA filing a lien against us and our house for overdue payments, threatening to foreclose on our home if we don't pay them two and a half years worth of back pay from when we first bought our place. The thing is, we've been paying the HOA monthly since we've moved here. They've sent us a bill for 96 bucks every month and we're always prompt with our payments. And then, out of nowhere, we got this notice yesterday saying that we owe them an additional $600 plus $350 for legal fees. So I called the legal team that they're using and I found out that apparently we're supposed to be paying two HOAs. The one we've been paying regularly is the smaller, more local HOA, and there's a larger, master HOA that also expects payment from us, roughly 19 or 20 bucks per month. Except we've never heard of this parent company. They've never contacted us once, let alone to send a bill of any kind. All HOA contact that we've ever had was with the smaller, local company that we're familiar with. So this lien and legal notice is literally the first we have ever heard of these people or any financial responsibility that we have to them. As far as we've been aware, for the last two plus years, we were completely square on our homeowner fees. We were worried it might be a scam, so we checked with our neighbors and they confirmed it. There is definitely a second HOA. Not only that, they went through a nearly identical situation, minus the lien, a few months back and implied that several others in our neighborhood have had to deal with this very thing. My question is, do we have any legal basis to push back on this? Obviously, we are happy to pay any bills moving forward, provided they actually ever send us a bill for once. But we are in no position to suddenly cough up $600 back pay for a fee that we didn't even know existed two days ago. At the very least, even if they force us to pay the $600, I would hope that we can convince them to cover their own legal fees. After all, if they had ever sent us correspondence of any kind, a letter, an email, a phone call, anything to let us know that they existed and expected payment, they never would have needed to get a lawyer involved in the first place. I'm in the process of creating a written statement contesting the fees and don't want to be so bold that I shoot myself in the foot. But the whole thing seems genuinely preposterous to me. We always try to stay on top of our bills, and since we didn't know this second HOA even existed, I honestly don't know what we could have done differently to avoid this situation. Do you agree with this? To grab all the CCNR documents from when you bought the house, get a real estate lawyer, and have them review it to see if they have any other questions on that, and then they say it's a common ploy to jack up costs. And then this commenter wonders if there's a second HOA parent, they'd be interested to know if they're run by the same company as the child one that they've been paying. What would you do? This sounds very strange. Let me know. Buy my program when you fire me? No? Okay. I was employed at a rather large factory, which is one of the largest plant-based companies in the world, recently bought by an investment firm not so long ago. Anyways, I developed a program which was used at the factory. It could tell whenever any machines were not running, even if it was due to a manual stop or anything else. My program knew the reason why the machine was idling. This program made it so much easier for the entire factory. Workers were happy because they didn't need to do any manual work and write down every time the machine stopped. Lead up to about a year ago. The factory appoints a new chief. All the old employees that were in a leader position were let go because it was time for, quote, new blood to come in, end quote. There was a lot of talk about selling off parts of the factory, including machines and so on. This included programs that I had developed, including the program that identified whenever a machine stopped. I developed this program on my spare time. I showed it to the old management and they liked it enough that they wanted to use it on every station in the factory. Every machine was to use this program and all that had to be done was for the program to be maintained weekly. 
This was around five years ago or so. When the newly appointed factory chief wanted to let the old employees, me included, leave, it was not known that I was the person behind that program. Anyways, at my meeting with HR and the factory chief, I said that I was willing to sell them the program and teach someone how to maintain the program. The factory chief laughed in my face and said that it was company property and that it was simply their program and not mine. I offered to show them the source code and everything, but it led up to the point to where if I was to tamper with the program before my departure, they would sue me. I was officially let go. Two month countdown began and after two months, I was free. After a week or so, they noticed problems with the program. It would stop loading, stop registering stops, and it would mislabel stops. I knew that this was when the fun was about to begin. After about a month, I was called into the office and was told that I had tampered with the program because it had suddenly stopped working. I let them know that someone had to maintain it. I was ordered to teach someone how to do that job, and I told them, well, after you pay me for the program rights, they wouldn't budge, and I was told to return to work. When I had a week left, I strolled around the factory floor for a while and noticed that no stations were running my program anymore. I asked some operators why that was, and they told me, it just stopped working, now we need to fill out forms every time the machine stops manually. I shrugged and told them to thank the factory chief. I left after that week. I got a phone call about a month after I left where they begged me to sell them the rights and teach someone how to maintain it. I never sold them that program. Instead, I sold an improved version to another factory nearby where I am now employed. Now I see some people say that I am in the wrong based on US law. Just editing here to let you know that this didn't take place in the US. I made the program during my spare time at home, on my own computer. After introducing the program to the former factory chief, I was allowed to try it out on one machine and test it. The maintenance was done on my office computer. And after a few months, I was allowed to roll it out for the entire factory. It wasn't done overnight, there was lots of debugging to do. I have not heard anything from the company for nearly a year, so it would be weird for them to just suddenly come after me now. Just wanted to make that clear. That sounds like a classic case of, we're the company and we're going to do it right. Oh, we need to listen to the people that work there on the ground floor. Have you ever seen this happen? Let me know. The HOA president tows me. Your Honor, I'm no HOA member. Click the video on your screen to find out what happens to that nasty HOA and I'll see you there.